A new breed of spacesuit is needed for a new breed of spaceship. The 1998 film Armageddon director Michael Bay once gave an interview where he talked about the greatest production issue. He recalled, I went to inspect the spacesuits three weeks before our first day of primary photography. They appeared to be an Adidas jogging outfit hanging on a rack. Because if you don't have awesome spacesuits, the entire movie is doomed, he claimed. That's where I almost killed myself. It appears that Elon Musk relates to the same philosophical approach. And besides, when it comes to piquing the public's interest in space travel, style matters. And so the tech billionaire just delivered a game-changing spacesuit that shocked everyone in the space industry. Why is it a game changer? Let's investigate. Hello everyone, welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. One of the cutting-edge features the Crew Dragon crew are enjoying is the new SpaceX spacesuit's Hollywood-style appearance, aka Starman suit. Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin, two NASA astronauts, were the first people to use the suits in space during their mission, which began on May 30, 2020, with a flawless launch from Florida. This was the first human spaceflight from the state since the termination of the space shuttle program in 2011. How much has evolved since then? Bankin and Hurley, seasoned astronauts, were dressed in all-white SpaceX suits for their rocket trip to orbit. This time, instead of the traditional pumpkin suit launch suits they frequently wore during space shuttle flights. According to Kathleen Lewis, curator of multinational space programs and spacesuits at the National Air and Space Museum of the Smithsonian Institution, suits are the charismatic mammals of space technology. They make the human experience come alive. The SpaceX suits actually remind me of James Bond's tuxedo if Tony Stark had upgraded it for James T. Kirk's upcoming major mission. The suits are streamlined, graphic, and articulated, and they belong more to the pulp culture comic con space style continuity than to the NASA continuum. It should come as no surprise considering that Jose Fernandez, a costume designer who has worked on films like Batman vs. Superman, The Fantastic Four, The Avengers, X-Men 2, and, well, you get the idea, developed the prototype. Regarding his Armageddon experience, Mr. Bay noted that there are individuals around Hollywood that are expert designers. There are expert spacesuit helmet designers. It's an extremely specialized trade. Elon Musk merely turned to that source in place of the typical Air Force and Navy contractors, despite the fact that Fernandez admitted in 2016 that he was unaware of SpaceX when first approached to Bleep Magazine. I didn't know what SpaceX was. In response to an invitation to be one of six candidates to try out for the position, Fernandez produced a helmet in the two weeks he had available and ultimately spent six months working with Musk to build the suit, which was then reverse-engineered to fulfill space travel criteria. Not by mistake, the connotations with tuxedos. Everyone looks better in a tux regardless of size or form, Musk kept reiterating during the design process, according to Fernandez, who spoke to Bleep. The intention was for the astronauts to put on the suit and look better than they did without it like a tux, he said. Lewis claims that the space program has always been aware of the value of using visual signals. Before someone painted them silver, the Mercury suits were a typical Air Force green color. She went on to say that while there are many ideas as to why, including the fact that the silver was reflective and increased visibility of the astronauts, the most likely conclusion is it looked new and high-tech. Musk is taking that knowledge to a new level. The outcomes appeal to the romance and mythology of space, the promise of going boldly where no man has gone before, rather than an awkward reminder of tiny people lost in a setting where they obviously have no place, as exemplified by the exaggerated Michelin Man profile of the traditional spacesuits. Take into consideration the large white ones the Apollo team wore during the first moon landings. Even Boeing's new cobalt blue Starliner suits, called as pumpkin suits, share the same basic design albeit being more streamlined than the orange ones used for the Discovery launch in 2011. The SpaceX suits, on the other hand, appeal to the traditions of the fashion world, the way that Barbarella-era designers like Courage and Paco Rabanne personified space travel in the 1960s, when it was all about body-con physicality and optimism. However, Lewis claims that they are the most closely related to the Hollywood tradition of the idealized human warrior body, which frequently features elongated shoulders and a carapace of articulated muscle, as opposed to the high-altitude pilot suit that served as the inspiration for the majority of previous launch suits. 
The musk suits include squared off shoulder lines, aerodynamic seams from the collarbone to the knee, and matching knee-high superhero boots. Darker panels down the sides visibly taper and sculpt the torso. They lack the standard suit's protruding wires, knobs, and hoses. The SpaceX suits are able to accomplish this in part because they are not designed to be used outside of a spacecraft and do not need to be what Lewis refers to as personal spaceships outfitted with an oxygen supply, cooling system, and communications equipment. The SpaceX suits also look just as good standing up as they do while reclining, in contrast to most previous suits, which were typically saggy and hunchbacked while vertical due to being designed to be comfy for an astronaut while strapped into a couch. They also satisfy the many complex technical requirements of a fully working garment. A spacesuit is a piece of hardware that needs to be connected to the ship, not only have a similar color scheme. The suits can be identified as an Elon Musk creation because of that. Gary Westfall, the author of the spacesuit film A History, 1918-1969, noted in an email that as long as space travel was being funded by governments, there was no need to make the suits appealing because the astronaut's safety was the only issue. However, if commercial space travel is to be pursued for financial gain, there is a natural incentive for corporations to market their astronauts as appealing. When Richard Branson was seeking for a designer for his Virgin Galactic uniforms, which are stylistically somewhere between the NASA past and the SpaceX present, there is a reason he connected with Under Armour. Mr. Musk has long emphasized the value of design and technology, just like Steve Jobs did before him. He disclosed in 2016 to the startup accelerator Y Combinator that he spent roughly 80% of his time on engineering and design. He is aware that appearances have a role in the narrative that something conveys. It can foster an emotional bond that translates into commercial power as well as subconscious identification with a group that has a recognizable shared aesthetic. This information is taken from the fashion industry, a field Musk briefly engaged in. He utilized the Met Gala in 2018 to publicly confirm his relationship with Grimes, and he was featured in Vogue in 2015 with a photo of him in a spacesuit. Besides, he is not the only Musk working in the fashion industry. May Musk, his mother, is a very successful model. According to Lewis, who hopes to add the SpaceX suit to the 278 spacesuits, prototypes, and suit pieces already in the Smithsonian's collection, it's good branding because it implies we are starting a new age. The era of commercial spaceflight has arrived bringing with it all the brand expansion prospects it entails. The SpaceX suits may in fact represent wearable technology at its pinnacle, a previously derided idea. Now all that is left to do is wait and see what Jeff Bezos comes up with for Blue Origin. And now let's take a closer look at the new SpaceX suit. The Helmet Technology A microphone and pressure system valves for the suit's pressure system are located in the helmet. That's a challenging task in a noisy spacecraft probably requiring an active noise-canceling device close to the speaker's mouth. Even NASA used comparable voice technologies as early as 2013. For a tech-forward business like SpaceX, it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect updates to these older technologies. This is significant since standard cap-based microphone systems frequently have wire wear and blind mating of the connectors. Inspection reveals that SpaceX uses in-helmet communications. These kinds of systems must deal with the fluctuating pressures, dampness, and other situations that are typical in enclosed situations. Finally, helmets have retraction mechanisms that allow the visor to be opened and closed as necessary. Gloves with a touch sensor. Many of the onboard controls on Dragon are touch activated and the crew suits are made with touch sensitive gloves. Traditional spacesuit gloves didn't have electroconductive fingertips, but these ones have. Also, SpaceX lowered physical mass to improve dexterity, a critical weakness in previous gauntlet, which was a major limitation. According to a BBC story on the development of the spacesuit, blue suits from businesses like Boeing have undergone similar advancements. The complete garment has been made more user-friendly by modern contoured fitting. Additional technical information to follow. According to Elon Musk, the costumes are intended to pique interest in space travel. SpaceX proves that beauty goes beyond the surface with its sleek, futuristic design that is packed with technology, some of which has yet to be revealed. Future NASA and outside missions will struggle to strike a balance between form and function. There have been at least eight different models of spacesuits utilized by NASA over the past 60 years. Likewise, the aerospace behemoth Boeing has a deal with NASA to send humans to the space station aboard its CST-100 Starliner spaceship. It has designed a pressure suit to protect astronauts throughout the vital phases of launch and re-entry. 
The Boeing Blue spacesuits are more flexible and nearly 40% lighter than preceding generations of spacesuits worn by American astronauts. To keep astronauts cool, they have a variety of interior layers. In order for astronauts to use tablets in the spacecraft, the suit also incorporates touchscreen sensitive gloves. To provide Starliner passengers with superior peripheral vision during their trip into and out of space, the soft, hood-like helmet has a large polycarbonate visor. The astronaut's ability to easily change positions from sitting to standing will be facilitated by zips in the torso area. Two future suits for the agency's Artemis program were first shown off by NASA in October 2019. The Orion spacecraft from NASA will be used in this endeavor to send men back to the moon by 2024. Comparable to the suits worn by SpaceX and Boeing, one of the suits is known as the Orion Crew Survival System. Although lighter, it is reminiscent to the so-called pumpkin suits worn by astronauts aboard space shuttles. The other suit, known as the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit suit, is intended for use on the moon's surface. The pressure suits made to be worn inside spacecraft are far more compact than this one. The reason for this is that it must shield the wearer from temperature extremes outside the spacecraft's walls. Additionally, some shielding from micrometeorites and other tiny species of space junk is what it is intended to do. It resembles the spacewalking suits that have been deployed on the ISS in several ways in the past. At the ISS, spacewalking is done in one of two suits. One is the Orlin type, which was invented in Russia and was first used in December 1977. A one-piece spacesuit called the Orlin is used. The spacewalker can enter the backpack by pulling open a door similar to that on a refrigerator. The other suit worn in the space station is NASA's EMU, which was first introduced in 1981. The EMU has a bottom half and top half unlike the Orlin, which comes in one piece. The semi-rigid suit can keep its wearer alive outside in the vacuum of space for about 8.5 hours. The two suits are transported by astronauts on their way to the ISS. The EMU is the name of the spacesuit that the Apollo astronauts wore on the moon, albeit it is not the same as the contemporary version. Years of development led to its creation. Since the first spacewalk done in March 1965 by the late cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, spacesuit technology has advanced significantly. As soon as Leonov entered the vacuum, his suit expanded, causing his gloves to come off and his hands to emerge from them. The cosmonaut could only return to the spacecraft by draining air out of the suit putting him at danger for the bends. And that ends today's episode. What do you think of this episode? What do you think of the Starman suit? Let us know your thoughts on the comment box below. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you like our video, don't forget to click the like button. Click the notification bell to receive updates when we upload videos to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.